Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about uh, Batman Returns. Um, continuing on my uh, journey through the Batman anthology. Uh, uh, the fir first four huge uh, theatrical film series of Batman films. Um, um, now, I want to also sort of say something beforehand regarding the, um, uh, my previous video, where, um, regarding the critiques or the little things that I, uh, I mentioned not being too fond of for Batman, uh, even though I did my best to reiterate how I love the film, um, I just want to just say again, even though I may have, um, not been, uh, huge fan of, say, like, the chemistry between Basinger and Keaton and Batman. I still enjoy the film. I want to just re-emphasize that, or emphasize that again. Um, and regarding the uh, uh, Bruce Wayne being stiff um, with Keaton's portrayal, again, I think, for me at least, when I heard that critique, uh, uh, being brought up uh, uh, from some uh, people who, while they, you know, other, other people who have made uh, videos on that fi uh, about that film, uh, and they l enjoy that film quite a bit, um, they also said they thought at times he could have been stiff, uh, but that could have been due to the fact of perhaps the chemistry involved or the writing, um, possibly some of the direction too, since Tim Burton kind of was more, seemed to be a bit more interested in the Joker's side of things instead of Batman and Bruce Wayne's side. Um, again, I just wanted to sort of point that out and how I kind of noticed a bit of stiffness, but I personally attributed that mostly to uh, the chemistry between uh, Keaton and Basinger. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the chemistry between uh, Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer is very good. Um, you know, this film uh, has a Batman face off against Catwoman and uh, Penguin, and he does a, you know, and this film is very entertaining, darker than the first film, which you know you would hope would be the case. Um, yet yeah, that's also interesting how because of that that would sort of affect the future installments of this four film series um but you know the uh, you know of another villain you know Max Shrek uh, played by Christopher Walken uh, sort of uh creates Catwoman in that he shoves her out of a window and she stumbles upon what he's uh, his, like his intentions are his true intentions you know um and I just find that to be you know, very interesting. Um, you know, a lot of people love Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, and she does a fantastic job. Uh, but, you know, uh, I do see this as if Tim Burton, you know, being Tim Burton and putting his spin on things, which, you know, it isn't really bad at all. Um, but that could also be seen for some, maybe not necessarily being true to the character of Selena Kyle or Catwoman in some of the way she acts, um, like her origin, that being changed could also, I could see, annoying people. Um, it doesn't bother me too much with the context of the film. I mean, being familiar with the comics and knowing about her backstory of growing up poor and everything, yeah, I can definitely see a big comic book purist being annoyed at that aspect, but, uh, I have no real problem at the end of the day, with the interpretation of her origins in this film. Uh, she gives a fantastic performance. Michael Keaton, I think he, he does better job as Bruce Wayne and Batman, um, mainly because you see a bit more focus on Bruce Wayne. There's still a lot of Batman in this film, um, but uh, it just... Uh, seeing uh, his his portrayal of Bruce Wayne shining more 
in the sequel, I think, is better than, say, his initial portrayal in the first installment. Uh, Danny DeVito uh, does a fine job as the Penguin, um, though I know there are people who dislike this character in the film because of how disgusting and grotesque he is. Um, and I actually have a brother who dislikes this movie solely because of that. The Penguin ruins it for for him because of how just disgusting he is, and like he, like just barely able to. Any times he he rewatches it, he's just he's at times able to get to the end, but sometimes just barely because of how disgusting it is. Um, I have no problem with it though, but you know, again, I grew up with this film, um, so I'm used to it, but. And I'm also, at this point, having seen many of Tim Burton's other films and seeing how weird and uh, stuff can get with him, I think that his portrayal of the Penguin in Batman Returns is quite tame uh, compared to some of the other uh, stuff you can see in other films Burton has made. Um, I didn't mention Pat Hingle or... Michael Goff, unfortunately, in the last video, but they do a fantastic job as Commissioner Gordon and um, uh, Alfred. You know, Alfred is really incredible in Batman as well as Batman Returns. Though Michael Goff, um, or Pat Hingle, I don't know why I said Michael Goff again, but Pat Hingle as a, you know, Commissioner Gordon, as the films went on, he didn't have too much to do as. As Commissioner Gordon, he was the most active in Batman. In Batman Returns, he still has some stuff that he's able to do, but, you know, it's just not as... It's just weird to see that role get dwindled down as the films go on. It's just... I think it's just weird, and Gordon is a great character. Um, I'm glad, though, that the presence that uh, they have Alfred in these films, he's always great. Um, regardless of how the quality goes for you, uh, be it declines or gets better than declines, whatever your thoughts on the f films, like the sequels go, I think this is a, you know, it's just interesting to see certain characters, their roles are lessened with each installment. Um, you know, the the, the film itself is obviously darker than the first film, um, which also was a big problem that many had, because um, the film uh, had a marketing with campaign with a, like, not necessarily a campaign, but they had uh, toys at McDonald's, and because of this, you know, a lot of people had the misconception that this was a kid's film, when the fact is the film is rated PG-13, which does not say that's a kid's movie. Um, yes, kids can go see a PG-13 film. You know, parents take them to see, see it. They definitely can watch it, but that doesn't mean it's for kids. That should be, a, I think, a big clue on the posters and... No doubt, uh, any TV commercials and everything else with that that would say it's rated PG-13. It's just weird that parents got upset over that when they should have known what the film was rated. And even from some of the commercials and the trailers, it's a bit dark at times. You know, of course they can't show how dark the film gets uh, without either spoiling the film or possibly frightening some people, I guess, with how people reacted uh, to this film. Um, but watching it from a, a young age, um, I enjoyed it, and I still enjoy it, but I do think that the original Batman, you know, Batman 89, is better. I think it is the best of this series here, um, but I do like how it became darker, and also we saw more Bruce Wayne. Um, I have a feeling if 
Tim Burton was able to do his third Batman film, we would have seen more of Bruce Wayne. Like, that seems to be sort of, like, kind of where he was going. In the first Batman film, didn't see too much Batman and Bruce Wayne, at least compared to, like, the Joker. And again, the Joker was, you know, uh, Jack Nicholson. So I guess one could make the argument that's the reason. Um, but, uh... With that all said, I think that the, this could have been an interesting way to continue with the franchise with Burton's direction. But because of the reaction that people had and not being happy that McDonald's had Batman Returns toys to a film that was not really kid-friendly, there's a lot of backlash to that. Um... But, you know, the film made money, though not as much as the first film. Um, and hence, the next installment was a bit lighter. And we would see that lightness continue into the fourth film of this series. Um, I've often said with the Dark Knight trilogy, what I loved is the Bruce Wayne story, and... I think with this film, Burton kind of wanted to explore that more, and I think that would have been uh, fantastic to do so with not just this film, but the third installment with Michael Keaton. It's just, we never got to see that. We never got to see um, what all Burton wanted to see. I mean, there's some stuff and ideas out there, obviously, that, that you can find, uh, some documentaries and featurettes on this Blu-ray as well as, you know, others. And also on the internet, people have made videos about what Tim Burton's third Batman film would have been to sort of, like, follow up Batman Returns. But, you know, whatever Burton wanted to do, he didn't get to do, obviously because of the reaction to this film. Again, I think this film is fantastic. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, it may not be the best Batman film ever made, but, you know, it's fantastic it's, nonetheless. It's a fun movie. Um, uh, you know, performances are still very good. Um, Michael Keaton does a, a good job, a great job as Batman Bruce Wayne. I think even his performance is even stronger, and I think the help with the uh, chemistry he has with Michelle Pfeiffer, I think, helps, too. Um, I really like their chemistry as Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle, as well as Batman and Catwoman. The dynamic they have is, I think, fantastic. I think their, uh, their chemistry was incredible, and I loved just seeing their uh, interactions. Um, now one could say that the whole, like, uh, nine lives for Catwoman is a bit taken too literally. Um, I think that's kind of just fun to see, like, cats have nine lives, and so, so does Catwoman. She has nine lives. She's, like, licked and bit a bit from cats and then comes back to life, essentially. Um, it's also interesting to see her transformation from... Selena Kyle kind of being meek, sort of this meek woman, quiet woman, to being Catwoman, having more confidence in herself, and that's just really cool to watch. Um, regardless of how accurate that is to the comic books, that's just cool. I don't care what people say. That's just a really cool way to see it um, see it unfold. Though people do say, like, you know, She's not very crazy, obviously. The character isn't I can seem like how Burton uh made the character out to be, which is true. But she uh you know, with the context of the film and um it fits. It fits very well. Um it's not out of the ordinary, it's not like a curveball was thrown and it doesn't make sense. It does make sense. Um whether you like that or not is, I guess, one's, I guess that's your uh, perspective on it. Um, personally, I uh, 
have no uh, real problems with it at all. Uh, it fits with the film, and there you go. Uh, I guess one could argue which performance of Catwoman is better, but that's, again, always subjective. Um, Michelle Fiverr does a fantastic job here, um, just like Anne Hathaway did a great job in The Dark Knight Rises. And Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather, and Eartha Kitt did a great job uh, as the character in the in the 60s. Um, Halle Berry, I would say, would be the only one who didn't really do a good job. But then again, the material she had for Catwoman wasn't really good anyway, so... It would have been very hard for anybody for that film to really be the character as played as well as one could. It would have been just difficult to make that work. Um, but, you know, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer for this film does a very good job. Danny DeVito's performance, I think, is also good. Um, again, with the whole disgusting aspect, uh, eating the raw fish, biting the guy on the nose, and then at the end, the ooze coming out, which is supposed to be like blood or something. That's all disgusting. Um, but he's also sympathetic in that uh, his parents throw him out. And... Um, It, that's just really sad, you know. Especially when Oswald Kabbalpatva, you know, finds where his uh, parents are, like they are laid to rest, and yeah, it's just, you know, he is a very sympathetic character. As even though he is disgusting and gross, he is sympathetic too, um, which is something that should be. I guess important to remember, but I guess for some, the disgusting aspect of the character is a bit too much. May, you know, might uh, gloss over the part of, or overshadow the whole sympathetic aspect to the part of Penguin. Um, though I will also say that, uh, you know, Paul Rubens is in the film as a, uh, Oswald Cobblepot's father at the very beginning, if you, uh, uh, you know, you realize, I mean, you know, I've seen this, I remember in my teenage years, re-watching this film, realizing that's who it was, even before, like, watching the credits, like, that's Pee Wee Herman, um, of course, he's, he worked with him in, uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Tim Burton and Rubens. Uh, but I just found it interesting, like, Pee-wee is in a Batman film, essentially, but, uh, yeah, the, the you know, uh, this film is really well done. Um, the score is also fantastic. No Prince soundtrack, though. Um, regardless if one really loved the Prince film, or the Prince soundtrack to the first film, you know, there is none for this uh, installment, but, you know, hey, you can always re-listen to the Bat Dance anytime if you want, um, but, but this, uh, this is a very good sequel, it's a, 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 a an incredible movie, really good movie, great even, um, uh, it's it's just uh, it's an interesting uh, follow up, uh, especially when you think what could have happened afterwards had the reaction or reception to the film, not just critically but audience wise, have been a bit different, and uh, you know the sequels may not have happened the way that they did, you know, going forward. Um, but, you know, what's happened, happened, obviously. It, you can't change it, but the, this sequel is really good. It's uh, always entertaining to watch. I'm never bored watching it, uh, which I think is a good thing, especially when you rewatch something. 
um, at, for whatever reason, be it to just talk about it in general like this for me in the video format, or if one wanted to review it, or just for fun. You know, if a movie is slow or dull or boring or anything of the sort at any point, you know, that's not good. You know, in any fun uh, aspect of the film, may be lost either by the end of the film or at a certain point in the film can kind of get stuck and not be fun like you'd hope um, but not with this film this film is I always enjoy this film I always have fun watching this film uh, but yeah what do you think of this film do you enjoy this movie do you think it's better than Batman or do you think it isn't better than Batman, but maybe the best sequel to the film, the first Batman film? Um, do you, uh, yeah, what do you think of this film? Uh, basically, you can let me know in the comments. You can uh, let me know at uh, uh, at any point, basically. Um, I will... Uh, Definitely see you all next time. Hope you all all are having a great day, great weekend, and great week. Take care.